So in the lead up to November's election, our next guest argues the right to vote should be enshrined in the Constitution. In the forthcoming book, A Real Right to Vote, author Rick Hassan describes how throughout our nation's history, too many Americans have been disenfranchised or faced needless barriers to voting. Hassan maintains that part of the blame uh, falls on the Constitution because it doesn't contain an affirmative right to vote. He also calls out the Supreme Court for making matters worse by failing to protect voting rights and limiting Congress's ability to do so. And Rick Hassan joins us now. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. So, Rick, you've identified the two factors that you see, think cause the problems. How do you fix it? Well, you know, every four years, I'm called by people like you to come on TV and say, why is our election system broken? And why are we going to have armies of lawyers coming out and fighting over our election rules? It's, it's not normal. If you look around the rest of the world, they've got a set of rules that uh, are in their constitution that set up how voting is going to take place. They're not fighting over all of these things. People who are eligible to vote actually come out and they can vote. and and and. You know, things proceed and then you can fight about not about the election itself, but about the issues in the election. And so we need to think long term. We can't just think about what's going to happen in the next nine months. We have to think about what it's going to take over the next decade or two to fix our system. And it starts with fixing our Constitution by enshrining in it the right of all eligible people and only eligible people to cast a vote that will be fairly and accurately counted. So it'll also help against attempts to steal elections going forward. So that sounds so basic. What makes it complicated? Well, first of all, you know, Democrats couldn't even pass a regular voting rights uh, statute at the end of uh, 2022 when they lost control of the House of Representatives. How are you going to get a constitutional amendment that requires two thirds of both houses of Congress and get three quarters of the states mm. to agree to it. We haven't had a voting related to constitutional amendment since 1971 when many Americans were not even born. And that was the one that gave the vote to 18 to 21 year olds. <clears throat> we need to kind of think of a long term movement and it can start state by state. That's what happened with the 19th Amendment. It took over four decades after the Supreme Court rejected women's voting rights in 1874 until we got the 19th Amendment in 1920 that barred discrimination in voting on the basis of sex. Richard Al Sharpton, I, I remember uh, several years ago, former Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. had raised this point of a constitutional amendment about voting, and uh, he and Frank Watkins, a, a political leader at that time, wrote a book about it. Why do you think there has not been a real movement uh, to deal with this constitutional question, which could solve a lot of our voting rights problems and really fully democratize America. Why haven't we seen that? And what needs to happen to make that movement uh, viable? Well, you know, back when they were passing the 15th Amendment, which uh, came after the Civil War and barred discrimination uh, on the basis of race and voting, there was a proposal to have universal voting, and too many people disagreed with it. Too many people wanted to exclude others from the ballot. So we saw that movement in uh, the 1860s, then we saw it again in the 1950s as the Civil Rights Movement started, and then it kind of fell by the wayside until 2000. After the 2000 uh, debacle, you had uh, Jesse Jackson Jr., now you have a representative, Mark Pocan. It's only happening on the Democratic side now. And so one of the arguments I make in the book is that there's a lot in it for conservatives and for Republicans to enshrine the right to vote in the Constitution. It'll lower the amount of election litigation. It will make it harder to steal elections. And importantly, as the Republican Party is changing and is trying to appeal more to poorer working class voters, those are voters who get disenfranchised by these state rules that for no good reason make it harder for people to register and vote. So I think we have to show that it's in everyone's interest and not just in the interest of the Democratic Party to give everyone the right to vote for president. After all, in 2000, after the Florida debacle, the Supreme Court in Bush versus Gore reminded us we have no right to vote for president. It's just by the grace of state legislatures that we get to vote for president. And I think that's the point, because I don't think most Americans, even though we do not have the constitutional right to vote, and shouldn't it start there with a mass education by Republicans and Democrats and independents that we don't have that fundamental right based on the Constitution? 
Oh, yeah, we have to have a national conversation about this. People don't understand our Constitution. It's really complicated. And, you know, I looked at the 235-year history of the Supreme Court. Except for about a decade in the 1960s, the Supreme Court has been hostile to voting rights. So the other myth, besides that we don't have an affirmative right to vote in the Constitution, is that the Supreme Court is going to save us. They are not going to save us. Look at the Shelby County mm -hmm. case, where Congress tried to pass the Voting Rights Act. And in the end, the Supreme Court killed a key part of it, saying Congress exceeded its powers. The new book is entitled A Real Right to Vote, How a Constitutional Amendment Can Safeguard American Democracy. It's available next Tuesday, February 20th. Author Rick Hassan, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show this morning. Congratulations on the book. It was my pleasure.